Restaurant Marketing Secrets, episode 113. I'm your host, Matt Plapp, and we are brought to you by America's Best Restaurants, helping independent restaurant owners find more frequent customers because infrequent customers don't pay the bills. Somebody texted me the other day asking a few specific questions regarding my concepts on finding frequent customers and what that means. So I'm going to cover that a little later. But first, I'm going to cover something that was on display last night right in front of my own eyes because it was me. And it was pretty cool to see. And it was, I was in the moment reflecting on something that is ultra important that I personally believe, and not only do I believe, I know for a fact is the key ingredient to us, our business, finding and keeping employees. And it's one of the key ingredients that's missing from your business and a lot of restaurants businesses to find and keep employees. And that is showcasing your culture, morale, and really having a lot of a lot of fun with it. So as I record this, it's a couple of days before our 2022 Christmas party. We're having it a little earlier than normal because it lined up perfect with our Thanksgiving food drive we do and it also got out of everybody else's travel plans. They were out of those way, out of the way of those. And so we're doing some videos with some of the employees who have flown in. Scott came in from Canada. Dexter's come up from Virginia. Lisa comes down from Northern Ohio. We got people that have come from all over the country. David's down from Philadelphia. His mom who works in his department comes down from Philadelphia today. And so we're taking this time to record some content with people that we only see, you know, three, four, five times a year. And last night I'm doing a episode with David of what the hell do you do in ABR? It's a little series I started. I think we're about eight episodes in. And the whole idea of it is to have fun and talk about what these key team members of our company do to help restaurants like yours. And I did David's last night and David's, I met him when he was 18. He's 22 now. He started working for me when he was 19. And now he's 22, my marketing director in charge of 15 people, including his mother. And as I'm sitting there asking some questions and watching him just soak it in and and run with this storytelling, I couldn't help but think and also know how impactful that video is going to be in the future on people seeing what we're doing and seeing what we've built. And I wholeheartedly believe, wholeheartedly believe that's one of the biggest problems in small business, not just restaurants, but small business, is that what you're offering is a job. That's it. You're offering a job, a place to get a check, a place to clock in, a place to leave. And that's it. The reason David's mom was attracted to our company when she saw a job post come up that really wasn't relative to what she did then. But when she saw it come up, she thought, man, that would be a cool place to work. And the reason is she's seen how we've showcased what we do for a long time and how we we put our team members, our employees in the middle of the spotlight, how we help them shine, but also just the you know, our personalities. You know, in David's video last night, you know, there was a couple little things that happened during the episode that weren't rehearsed that were showcased how I am and my leadership and showcased how he had fun with it. And that's what people want to see. And the problem is the only time they ever see your business is when you're trying to sell food, when you're trying to hire. I had a person I talked to today. I've hired 50 plus people in the last three years. That's kind of a big number for me. I was just to say that out loud, never say it out loud like that. But over those last three years, guess how many job postings I've put up on, you know, all these job listing websites? Zero. I've never posted on a site a job that's open at our company. I've only talked about it in our marketing. And we have a link on our website where people can apply as well. But we get so much traffic when I do make a Facebook post, an Instagram post. I do videos. I did a video eight, nine months ago, right? I was driving in our van and I, I showed, pointed at one of my employees and said, you see that guy? You see him? I'm looking for more badasses like him. Is that you? Here's what I'm looking for. And I got a flood of people applying. 
And it's because of the atmosphere, the environment, the culture, what we show. And a lot of you have this. You just don't show it. The owners aren't on camera. The team members aren't on camera. You're not doing anything to story tell. All only time you ever market your business is when you need to sell food, and that's a shame. And that's what's going to lead to my conversation at the end about how we help restaurants find more frequent customers. So my homework for you today is I want you to go. I guess I got to find where it would be. I want you to go to YouTube. I'm going there with you. I want you to type in Matt Plapp. That's P-L-A-P-P. And you're going to see my first YouTube channel, 1,700 subscribers. And you're going to go on here. and You're going to go to videos. You're going to see me find the most recent one. I'm trying to scroll down here. There we go. Tom Bozier a month ago. What the hell do you do with what the hell do you do with Matt Plapp? And now I'm not a fan of that description. It needs to be a little more uh, digging and a little better for a little better for SEO. So I got to talk to my team about that. There's also one on here with Lisa from two months ago. What the hell do you do with Matt Plapp? So that's another topic for a different video is building these here YouTube videos and your content with the correct titles. Thumbnails are great. Lisa's thumbnails is a rock star. Tom's is a rock star. It looks great. But they need to be a little more in-depth to try and get the algorithm to find it. But I don't do these as much for getting found. I do these as much for people to see who we are that follow us and want to be a part of the team. So that's my goal for you today is to watch one of those two episodes. And there's a, I think there's four or five in the whole. We're launching like one a month. We're going to probably get to where we do one every two weeks. But I want you to to put something out there differently because as I talked about early on, the, the goal of our company is to help restaurants like yours find more frequent customers. And the way you find more frequent customers is by dominating their attention in the two and a half inch billboard they carry around in their pocket, their cell phone. And when I say dominate their attention, you're not dominating their attention with your lame ass social media posts, your email newsletters, your text messages like I get from Dickie's Barbecue every day about buying barbecue. You're just annoying and getting out of their attention. You dominate their attention by being something they want to watch, something they want to listen to, something they want to engage with, by having a brand on social media that doesn't just talk about your company, by having a website that has more information on it than just your food. It's got your team. It's got your story. It's got what's happening. By having a podcast for your restaurant that's not about your food or your beer or your coffee or your pastries. That's about your customers and why they come there, why they're in the community. There's a lot of things. That's what we help restaurants do. And this all goes back to my early roots of this company around 2010, 11, 12, because we started in 08. We're going on this is year 14, 2023 next year, year 15 of being in business. Been doing marketing since the 90s. Digital marketing since 1999. Swallow that one. And what I found in the early years, our restaurant clients that we had a lot of success with, and people say, why did you move to the restaurant space, Matt? Because we had at one point 30, I think 34 companies that was from 31 industries that we worked with in Northern Kentucky, Cincinnati. We had nine restaurants. We eventually shifted completely to restaurants. They said, why? I said, well, I saw two big things. Number one, I, my team and myself are really good at getting consumers to raise their hand and volunteer their, their contact information. And I evaluated what industry could use that over and over and over. And then number two, I saw that there was that connection that people enjoyed restaurants. People don't enjoy the car dealership. They don't enjoy a dentist. They don't enjoy going to most businesses. We had a pain management clinic, car dealership. We had home builders we had you know all these different things you can you name it we we've, we've helped market it back in the day people just it was it was a transaction food is not a transaction it's memories my wife and I went on a little date last night we had i've been out of town the last two weeks and so we went out for dinner even though i've got team members in town i said hey guys y'all are on your own tonight i got to go hang out with the wife she's probably going to murder me we haven't talked much in two weeks i haven't gone we went to a restaurant to do that so that's one of the reasons. 
And so what I've seen in my days and what got me to this point was back in the early days of us running marketing for restaurants was trial and error was that, yes, I would get on Quaker Steak and Lube, a brand we worked with, a franchise that was in, it's in Northern Kentucky, Cincinnati, and I would market that brand's products, and people didn't give a crap. But the minute we got on there and had a big marketing event for the Walking Dead night, they loved it because they loved Walking Dead, and it was a unique way for them to enjoy their passion and come together with a community, and it happened to be at the restaurant. And that just got me going. We started looking at all these things. And so next thing I know, the nine restaurants we're working with, 75% of what we're doing with them is not about the restaurant. And guess what happened? Those restaurant sales grew and grew and grew and grew. And so that's what we're here to help you with. So if you're interested in getting help with your restaurant, here's the easiest call to action ever. Text me. My cell phone number, 859-743-2408. 859-743-2408. Shoot me a text. I had somebody the other day shoot me a selfie with him and his wife and said, hey, this is me and my wife. This is our restaurant. We'd love to have a conversation with you. Keep up what you're doing. Love the podcast. Do the same. Send a selfie. Send me a picture of burger, a picture of whatever you guys do. And ask me a question. Let's have a conversation. You know, If I can have a conversation with you, I can give you some advice to find out what you want to do, why based on that. And I can also direct you in the right way. Maybe I'm not the, maybe my company's not the team. Maybe my 55 plus re- consume team that work only with restaurant operators like yourself aren't the right answer. Maybe it's somebody else. And I'm not afraid to do that. So let me know. That's my cell. I'll talk to you then. I'll see you next episode.